This is a story about French film legend Jean-Pierre Melville. He fought in the French resistance against the Nazi regime. He inspired renowned contemporary directors from all over the globe like Ringo Lam, John Woo, Quentin Tarantino, Aki Kurosaki, Michael Mann, and Jim Jarmusch. And he is known as the spiritual father to the French New Wave. He was born to violence and chaos and thus formed by it. He was forced alone into a secretive criminal life which made him fiercely independent. He learned to love all things American and despise all things communist. And along the way, he made some great movies. To quote Melville himself, your first film should be made with your own blood. This is something he knew all too well. Melville had been repeatedly rejected for assistant director's license in the new post-war French film union. To hell with him anyway. The new industry was created by Nazis and it operated like communists. Plus, they had outdated equipment and the French government was way too busy fetishizing indigenous cinema to know what a decent film was. Melville knew what good movies were. He had been watching five a day since he was the age of six when his dad bought him a hand crank camera for his birthday and he decided he was going to make his own movies. Despite silly tariffs on American films meant to protect indigenous French art, his exploration of cinema in his youth would expose him to masterpieces of Hollywood's golden age as well as the pre-code era. However, his love of cinema would be waylaid by the Nazi occupation of France. His childhood had been incredibly formative for his cinematic identity, but the following four years would arguably be more so. In 1940, at the age of 23, he joined the French resistance against the Nazi regime. During this time, he would adopt the pseudonym Melville as a nom de guerre. He named himself after his favorite American author, Herman Melville, the author of Moby Dick. In 1943, he would famously fight in Operation Dragoon. Re-entering society was difficult for Melville, who was now 27. After several failed attempts to become an assistant director, he decided to self-finance his own movies. However, despite this opposition, in 1949, he released his first feature film, Silence de la Mer, which received both critical praise and commercial success. Some aspects of this film precursed attributes that he would be famous for later in his career. For example, in the production of this, he declined funding from the French Film Union because he wanted to maintain creative control. This stark independence would reoccur throughout his career, defining him as a true auteur, being able to exactly create film in his own vision. The subject matter of this film was the French resistance that he had fought in. Melville would go on to make two other films about the resistance. These films were Leon Morin, Priest, and The Army of Shadows, both of which were also critically and commercial successes. As his work would develop, he cycled into a string of crime films. These crime films would be the peak of his critical and commercial success. His next film would again underscore the creative independence that he would be famous for. In collaboration with French poet Jean Cocteau, he made Les Enfants Terribles. Melville again maintained absolute creative control over this film by producing, editing, directing, writing, and even acting in it. Preceding this film, he would famously work in collaboration with French film legend Jean-Luc Godard on Breathless. Melville acts briefly in the film, but the majority of his contribution to the film was off-screen. Allegedly, when Godard was having difficulties editing the film down to a feasible length, he approached Melville for advice. Melville said to cut unnecessary establishing shots and frames from the film. The notion of cutting frames would become the device of jump cutting. The jump cutting in Breathless is one of the unique features and the idea of innovating behind screen that took place in this film would go on to inspire much of the foundation of the core ideas of the French New Wave. This is much of the reason why Melville is known as spiritual father to the French New Wave. Melville's greatest success was the 1956 film the Samurai. This film is a perfect amalgamation of a style Melville had been perfecting throughout his entire career. Melville loved to portray sophisticated, semi-violent French gangsters. However, there is more to Melville's style than just that. All of Melville's stories were incredibly fantasized. He once claimed that he wasn't a documentarian, but instead he made dreams. It is absolutely correct. Real criminals engaged in prostitution, unnecessary violence, pimping, and all manner of activities Melville and his audience would have perceived as vile. However, Melville's characters, besides being inanely involved in a life of crime, would not stray from a somewhat admirable moral code. 
Additionally, American influence is apparent in his style. His characters, actually like himself, would drive American cars, wear American clothes that were somewhat reminiscent of the noir films he had grown up watching, and shoot American guns. In Melville's personal life, he would perhaps be even more Americanized. After all, he had named himself after an American author. He loved American capitalism and loathed Russian communism. On the other hand, the technical aspects of this film perhaps were more influenced by Japanese film, particularly the work of Kurosawa and Ozu. Melville in this film particularly used a series of small actions that would lead to a larger action. In the following clip from The Samurai, Melville uses a procedural method of storytelling to depict a carjacking. This technique aids the characterization of the robber as precise and careful. This approach Melville employs is highly reminiscent of Kurosawa's samurai movies. The title of this film alone gives enough indication where his influence comes from. In this film, themes of isolation versus solitude and the inability to find connection and communicate, thus leading to inability to find love or friendship. These themes may have been relevant to Melville because of his struggle to re-enter society after World War II. Thank you for watching this video on French film legend Jean-Pierre Melville.